Next little statement. Christians do not need to follow the legalism of the Mosaic Law. Now, I hate that term, Mosaic Law, because it implies that Moses went around writing his own law. He just woke up one day and said, I think I'll write some laws today. And I, I'll write, okay, I'm going to write this one down. And, uh, oh, I got another one. I'm going to write this down. And, uh, oh, I got, oh, yep, yep, I'm going to write this down. No, no, that, that's, that's, not, that's not how it works. He didn't write his own laws. Exodus 24 and verse 4 says, Then Moses wrote down everything the Lord had said. So when we talk about the Mosaic law, we're talking about God's law. So here we are again. Christians do not need to follow the legalism of God's law. Now, what is this word legalism? You always hear this word thrown around. Well, the definition is dependence on moral law rather than on a personal relationship with God or personal religious faith. Now, my definition of legalism is this. It goes even further. Dependence on moral law to make you right with God, to think that you are justified by keeping the law. It's when you use the law for a purpose for which it was never intended, and that is to get right with God. The law was never given for that purpose. The law is revelatory. It reveals what sin is. 1 John 3, 4 says sin is the breaking of God's law. It reveals what God's will is in order to make your life work. That's the purpose of the law, okay? Now, let me ask you a question. How many people do you know who are truly trying to get right with God by keeping the law? To be honest with you, I have never met a person like that who actually thought, I don't need a Savior. I can, get, I can keep this law perfectly, and I, I'm, I'm going to get right by keeping God's law. You know, I'm going to be justified by keeping I have never met a person who actually believed that. Now, I've met a lot of people not keeping God's law who are trying to get right with God. That's mainstream churchianity, basically. They're not keeping the law, and they're trying to get right with God. Now, maybe the Pharisees of Jesus' day had this problem. You see, when Jesus walked this earth, there were two sets of laws. There was first the law of Moses, or the law of God, handed down from God. And then there was the tradition of the elders, Jewish tradition or referred to as the oral law of the Jews. Now, let's notice an example of this, Matthew 15 and verse 9. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Okay, what is this commandments of men? Well, it's, it's, it's referred to as the oral law, Jewish traditions that they had. This is how they achieved their self-righteousness. And, and in a way, I guess they thought they didn't need a Messiah because they could achieve it on their own. Now, let's take a look at examples of this oral law that existed when Jesus walked the earth. Okay, so I said there were two sets of laws. Now, Jesus did abolish a law, but it's not the law that you're thinking of. And I'm going to tell you what law Jesus abolished in this message. And it will begin to break up that concrete mind that you have that's been cast in stone the way you think. Okay, Mark 7 and verse 5. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not your disciples according to the tradition of the elders? That little statement, the tradition of the elders, it's Jewish tradition. It's referred to as the oral law. All right, it goes on, but they eat bread with unwashed hands. Okay, they're asking Jesus, why don't you keep our traditions? You see, this oral law was fence building around the law of God. That's what it was. It was, it was an explanation how you could keep each one of these Ten Commandments perfectly. In other words, on the Sabbath, you could go out and maybe pick a few grapes off the vine, but if you picked a cluster, that was harvesting. All right, this, it was fence building around the law of God. Check us out on the web at isthatreallyinthebible.com.